I've probably been a part of the survey now for 50 plus surveys. And this is really one of my favorite surveys that we've done uh, because of just the interesting topics that we cover and just the wide number of issues which really get at the heart of kind of par partisan politics in California. And so today, we're going to talk about uh, attitudes and preferences regarding items on the ballot in 2012, as well as state and national issues. And so the mission of the statewide survey is to provide timely, relevant, nonpartisan data on political, social, and economic opinions. We also seek to inform and improve state policymaking, raise awareness, and encourage discussion. In providing a voice for all Californians in state policy debates, we have interviewed over 250 Californians since 1998. So this survey is the 51st survey in the Californians and their government series, which is funded, as Dave mentioned, with generous support from the James Irvine Foundation. We touched upon the Republican primary candidate preferences, as well as attitudes towards Proposition 28 and 29. We also looked at the, a hypothetical race between Barack Obama and the Republican candidate in November, as well as two items that will likely be before voters in November, a state water bond and Governor Brown's tax initiative. We interviewed 2001 Californians from February 21st to 28th on cell phones and landlines, and the margin of error for all adults is 3.4%. For the 859 likely voters, it is 4.2%. So today we find that we have a close race between Mitt Romney and Rick Santorum for the presidential primary here in California, 28% to 22%. Uh, fewer would vote for Newt Gingrich or Ron Paul. Support for Mitt Romney has declined eight points since January and is similar to the 25% support he had in December. Meanwhile, support for Rick Santorum grew from 4% in December to 15% in January to 22% today. So Rick Santorum has really been uh, increasing his hold on California's Republican primary likely voters. So looking to November, we see that Barack Obama currently leads the Republican candidate in a hypothetical matchup, 53 to 37%. And results were somewhat similar in December when 55% preferred Obama and 30% said they would vote for the Republican candidate. There is, of course, a strong partisan support for each candidate with eight and 10 Democrats preferring President Obama and eight and 10 Republicans preferring the Republican candidate. Uh, currently, 58% of independents would prefer President Obama. And although voters across age groups say they would vote for Obama over the Republican candidate, about three in four likely voters under the age of 35 say they would support the president, while about half in other age groups um, would do so. We find that seven in 10 Latino likely voters would vote for President Obama, while whites are divided. So when asked about how satisfied they are with their choice of candidates, we find that just over half of likely voters are satisfied with their choice of candidates in the presidential election. We find two in three Democrats are satisfied, while Republicans are divided and independents are not satisfied. Democrats and independents held similar views in December, in, sorry, in January, while Republicans were more likely to be not satisfied. We also asked how closely they were following attention to news in a separate question and found that 83% of likely voters say they are at least somewhat following close attention to news with 41% saying they're following news very closely. Comparing this to three months before the February 2008 presidential primary, just 26% of likely voters then said that they were very closely following news about candidates. So we also wanted to gauge what Californians' preferences were for Congress 
after the 2012 elections. And we found that half of Californians would prefer a Congress controlled by Democrats, while 35% would prefer a Congress controlled by Republicans. Strong majorities in each party support their own party, and just over half of independents would prefer Democratic control. Nearly two in three Latinos prefer Democratic control, while whites are once again divided. So looking to the June primary, we wanted to gauge some of the support for Propositions 28 and 29. So Proposition 28, which is on the June ballot, would reduce the total amount of time a person may serve in the state legislature from 14 to 12 years while allowing that service to be in a single house. Today we find that 68% of likely voters would vote yes and 24% would vote no. There is majority support across parties, ideological groups, regions, and demographic groups for Proposition 29. And as we often do, we try to gauge how important the outcome of the election is to these likely voters. And when asked about the importance, we find that two in three view the outcome as at least somewhat important, with 22% saying very important. Likely voters that would vote yes on this issue are twice as likely as no voters to view the outcome as very important. And that's something that we often see, that the people that are actually you know, in support of it or you know, view the outcome as more important, while you know, sometimes people just vote no on a lot of propositions just because they, they just don't like to vote on propositions. So those are you know, less likely to say they view it as important. So in a separate question, in order to gauge their general perceptions about term limits, we found that 68% of likely voters think that term limits enacted by Proposition 140 in 1990 are a good thing for California. 11% call them a bad thing, and 18% say they don't make a difference. Solid majorities have said term limits are a good thing since we started asking this question in 1998. And although majorities across parties say that term limits are a good thing, Republicans are more likely than Democrats and independents to hold this view. So we also find strong support for Proposition 29, which would place an additional $1 per pack tax on cigarettes and an equivalent tax on other tobacco products, with funding going to cancer and tobacco-related diseases. There is majority support across parties, uh, but Republicans are much less likely than Democrats and in independents to say that they would support the initiative. There's also majority support, once again, across regions and all demographic groups. So when it comes to the importance of the outcome of Proposition 29, nearly 8 in 10 voters say the outcome is, is somewhat important, with 41% saying the outcome is very important. Similar to the findings regarding the results of Proposition 28, yes voters on Proposition 29 are much more likely than no voters to say that the outcome is very important. And when you aggregate the somewhat and the very, we find that on Proposition 29, 78% say that they view the outcome as at least somewhat important compared to two and three on Proposition 28. So at least right now, we find that they're placing more importance on the outcome of 29 compared to 28. So we also wanted to gauge support for taxing cigarettes more generally, not in the context of a proposition. And we found that there's also majority support for the general idea of increasing taxes on cigarettes to be used to help pay for state spending. Similar to support for Proposition 29, Democrats and independents are more likely than Republicans to favor this tax increase. Majorities across regions and demographic groups support increasing taxes on cigarettes. And this is a pretty consistent finding, regardless of kind of what the issue is. If we ask about taxing someone else, generally there's some public support for that. Um, since the majority of the public doesn't smoke, the, you know, hey, why not? Increase it. Uh, oops. So we also wanted to gauge uh, support for the $11 billion water bond that will be on the November ballot, as of now. Uh, and is part of a water package passed by the governor and the legislature in 2010. 
Today, 51% of likely voters would vote yes, while 35% would vote no, and 14% are unsure of how they would vote at this time. Two in three Democrats and 48% of independents would vote yes, while just over half of Republicans would vote no. San Francisco Bay Area residents are the most likely to support the water bond, as do half of those in Los Angeles. Just under half of residents in the Central Valley and the other Southern California region say that they would vote yes. In a separate question, we wanted to gauge kind of the uh, problem seriousness of water for, for respondents in their area of California, and we found that at least seven in 10 likely voters say that water is a problem with 35% calling it a big problem in their area of California. So turning to the uh, one single question which probably garnered the most press attention, um, we looked at Governor Brown's tax initiative again, and as part of his January budget plan, he included this tax initiative which uh, would be placed on the November 12 ballot. The initiative would temporarily increase the state personal income tax on wealthy Californians and temporarily increase the state sales tax. So when read the ballot title and a brief summary, 52% of likely voters say they would vote yes and 40% would vote no. It's important to note that earlier questions which had uh, somewhat higher support predated our ability to ask the specific ballot title and provide the summary as it's been provided by the Secretary of State. So um, while there may be a lot of questions about you know, comparing the results, it, it is kind of hard because this is the first time that we're actually able to read what's going to be, or at least read some, somewhat what's close that's going to actually be on the ballot. And so moving forward is where we would like to see kind of what happens from here. Does it go up or does it go down as more people kind of find out about the details that are in the initiative. And today we find that seven in 10 Democrats and half of independents would vote yes while 65% of Republicans would vote no. Opposition is higher among those making 80,000 or more compared to those making less and Opposition is also higher among men and whites compared to women and Latino likely voters. So another component of the governor's January budget was that if this initiative fails, there would be automatic spending cuts to K-12 education. And we find today that seven in 10 likely voters, including six in 10 or more across parties, oppose these automatic spending cuts. Eight in 10 likely voters who would vote yes on the governor's initiative and six in 10 who would vote no oppose the trigger cuts. Solid majorities across regions and demographic groups oppose these automatic cuts as well. So now turning to state and national issues, approval of, the gov of Governor Brown has dipped slightly since January, but since he took office, approval has hardly changed. However, when you look at the percentage that are unsure about how to rate him, since January 11, that has decreased from a 33% share saying that they're unsure of how to rate him down to 16% today, while during that same time frame, disapproval increased from 19% to 33% today. So people are kind of making up their minds about how to rate him, and it seems like uh, a good portion of those are actually going on the disapproval side. Approval of the state legislature also continues to be low, and since April 2008, 30% or fewer have approved of their job performance. And as you may expect, there's a partisan divide when it comes to the approval of both the governor and the legislature. At the federal level, approval of President Obama has rebounded a bit from his record low of 51% in September. And today, most Democrats and six in 10 independents approve of the president, while three in four Republicans disapprove. Adults nationwide are more divided about the president, according to a recent USA Today Gallup poll. When you turn your attention to Congress, we find that just one in four Californians approve of the way Congress is handling its job, and more than seven in 10 across parties disapprove of their job, of their job performance. 
However, Americans nationwide are even more disapproving with only 10% approving of Congress in a recent CBS New York Times poll. So Californians remain pessimistic about the economy despite there being some positive news or signs at the state and the national level. Only one in three Californians expect good times economically in, in the next year, while 56% expect bad times. Further, we find that 86% of Californians say that the state is in an economic recession, with 41% calling it a serious recession. In a separate question, we find that half of Californians mention jobs in the economy as the most important issue facing the state today. That's compared to only 8% that name the state budget or taxes, and 8% that name education and schools. Um, today, we also find that 4% mention gasoline prices as the most important issue, which is an increase from previous months. So another issue that has garnered recent attention is California's proposed high-speed rail system. A $10 billion state bond for the planning and building of a high-speed rail system from Southern California through the Central Valley and to the San Francisco Bay Area was passed by voters in 2008. As of late, we've seen Governor Brown come out with strong support while others have questioned its, um, its importance in light, of, in light of the state budget situation and increasing cost. When asked about building a high-speed rail system, 51% of Californians are in favor, while 45% are opposed. Opinion of likely voters is flipped with 53% in opposition and only 43% of likely voters favoring the idea today. Most Democrats favor the idea, most Republicans oppose, and independents are divided. We also wanted to gauge the importance that people had towards the idea of a, of a high-speed rail system in California. And the question was basically asking the importance of high-speed rail system to the future quality of life and economic vitality of California. And we found that six in 10 adults and 53% of likely voters said that it's at least somewhat important. But at this time, only 51% of Californians favor the idea. So turning to another issue that often divides partisans, we find that nearly six in 10 Californians view immigrants as a benefit to California because of their hard work and job skills, while 35% view them as a burden because they use public services. At least 54% of Californians have, have viewed immigrants as a benefit each time we have asked this question since 2000. As you might expect, partisans are divided on the issue with, and half of independents view immigrants as a benefit. There's also a divide across racial and ethnic groups with 85% of Latinos and 60% of Asians calling immigrants a benefit, while 42% of whites hold this view. And in regards to what should happen to most illegal immigrants who have lived and worked in the United States for at least two years, most Californians say that these immigrants should be able to keep their job and apply for legal status. One in four Californians say that these immigrants should be deported back to their native country. Since 2007, at least 65% of Californians have said that they should have a chance to keep their jobs. Partisans are once again divided, with three in four Democrats and two in three independents saying that they should have a chance to apply for legal status, while half of Republicans hold this view. And with an upcoming Supreme Court case regarding uh, health care reform and plenty of discussion about health care reform on the uh, campaign trail, we thought it would be a good time to gauge Californians' opinions on health care reform. When asked about the health care reform passed by Congress and President Obama, just under half of Californians say that the, they support these changes, while 39% oppose them. As you can see, this is another issue that divides partisans with strong majorities of Democrats in support and strong majorities of Republicans in opposition. Half of independents support these changes, and half of more Latinos and Asians support them, while whites, while half of whites oppose these changes. So one of the more controversial aspects of health care reform was the individual mandate. 
And today we find that 63% of Californians, including majorities across parties, regions, and demographic groups, oppose the individual mandate. Among those that oppose the changes to health care overall, 81% oppose the individual mandate, while those who support the changes to health care reform are divided. Also of note, 83% of those who disapprove of President Obama oppose the mandate, while, half, while those that approve of him are actually divided on the issue. So we took the opportunity this month to really delve into Californians' attitudes about the role of government in four subject areas that really generate a lot of debate. And when asked about the role of government in the regulation of business, Californians are divided with 48% saying regulation is necessary and 43% saying that regulation does more harm than good. Partisans are divided on this issue with six and 10 Democrats saying regulation is necessary and nearly three and four Republicans say it does more harm than good. Just under half of independents think that government regulation of business is necessary. Among California's likely voters, 50% say that regulation does more harm than good, while 44% say that it's necessary. So when asked about environmental, when asked if environmental regulations cost too many jobs and hurt the economy, or if they are worth the cost, Californians, likely voters, as well as independents are evenly divided, while partisans fall on the expected opposite sides of the issue with nearly six in 10 Democrats saying regulations are worth the cost and nearly identical share of Republicans saying they cost too many jobs. Findings among California today are markedly different from earlier surveys when about six in 10 said that regulations are worth the cost. And since our last survey that where we asked this question in 2004, the percentage saying regulations cost too many jobs has increased 19 points among independents, 18 points among Republicans, while findings among Democrats have changed little. So when it comes to the issue of the government and gun control, Californians are less divided with 53% saying government does not go far enough to regulate access to guns, while four in 10 say they go too far in restricting the rights of citizens to own guns. The percentage saying the government does not do enough is at a record low and is nine points lower than in 2000 and in 2004. Following a similar pattern among partisans, uh, strong majorities of Democrats and Republicans hold differing views on the issue, while half of independents say that government does not go far enough. Solid majorities of Asians and Latinos say government does not, go, does not do enough, while half of whites say that government goes too far. While partisans have disagreed about the role of government in business, environmental regulations, and gun control, that is not the case when it comes to access to abortion. Nearly seven in 10 Californians, including three in four likely voters and strong majorities of partisans, say government should not interfere with a woman's access to abortion. Since 2000, more than six in 10 Californians have had the, held this view each time we have asked this question. Californians across demographic groups today say the government should not interfere, and across religious groups, seven in 10 Protestants compared to 55% of Catholics say government should not interfere. Nine in 10 among those that are agnostic, atheists, or don't have a religion, or I should say don't believe in religion, agree that government should not interfere. So turning to an issue that was before voters in 2008 and could possibly be on the ballot again in, in the future, we find that half of Californians continue to be against legalizing marijuana. Across parties, six in 10 Democrats favor legalization, while six in 10 Republicans are against it and independents are divided. Solid majorities of Asian, Latina, Asians, Latinos, and women are opposed to legalization while men and whites are in favor on this issue. So 
So same-sex marriage is another issue which has garnered a lot of attention here in California and in other states as well as at the national level. And for the fourth consecutive time we've asked this question, the percentage favoring same-sex mar marriage has been at or eclipsed 50%. It first eclipsed 50% in March 2010 when there was a five-point divide between favor and oppose, and since then the divide has uh, grown to 11 points in September 2011, as well as 11 points today. Support among likely voters is even higher with 56% of likely voters uh, saying that they're in favor. And since our last pre-election poll prior to the vote on Proposition 8 in 2008, uh, which was in October, our last survey, we found double-digit increases in the percentage favoring same-sex marriage among Democrats, Republicans, Latinos, younger Californians under 35, older Californians over 55, and in evangelical Christians. And so there's been a, a real change, or at least it appears, in opinion when it comes to the overall topic of favoring same-sex marriage. That's somewhat different than what an initiative would be worded, and if it was put before the voters again, you know, uh, likely voters could potentially have differing opinions on that. So in conclusion, the race in California's GOP primary is close, and Rick Santorum has, has been steadily increasing his support. There is solid support for Proposition 28 and 29 on the June ballot, and half of likely voters would vote yes on the November water bond at this time. Half of likely voters also support the governor's tax initiative, while there is strong opposition to the K-12 trigger cuts. Californians are divided on high-speed rail system for California. Majorities are opposed to mandatory health care. And most Californians say that government should not interfere with access to abortion. And there is continued support for same-sex marriage. 